I've had a fair amount of interest in my real estate photography lately, so I figured I'd do a vlog so people can kind of come along and see how the process works. Today's house, we are in Akron, Ohio, just north of Portage Lakes. If you want to look up where Portage Lakes is, it's a nice little area. This house is a flip by one of my clients. He always does a wonderful job on the inside. Storm yesterday kind of just knocked everything down all over the place yesterday. So it was very windy. A lot of people lost power. There's little things that you don't generally think of when you're taking pictures of houses. One of those is you can actually see a reflection in the front door. So you definitely want to get out of the way so you're not cameoing in your own shots. I generally have a policy where I don't touch trash cans at people's houses, but I like this client, so I moved them. They were right in the driveway, and that would have made taking any sort of photograph rather difficult. Going into people's backyards is always precarious. A lot of times people have dogs, and it's very rare that anyone will ever pick up after their dogs. So you always have to watch out for landmines. When I photograph outside, I don't bother using the tripod and everything, but sometimes it's nice to, you know, have a little bit of stability with my shaky hands. The first things I do when I get in is try to find light switches for everything. And let's see, we have this one here. I'm guessing right here. Hey, I got it. And this one. Oh, uh, 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 yeah, I don't even think I need to have that on. It's just gonna screw up the colors even more. And you see warm tone lights like this in a house that has a lot of daylight tones. This comes out very orange when I'm doing editing. So I always have to pull that out. But I also wanna leave it on just because I could use the extra lighting in here right now. Ceiling fans are something that I don't think a lot of homeowners remember to clean. This house is a flip, so it obviously looks perfectly fine. I also have to turn off all fans when I'm doing photography. I have my high-tech way of stopping them, because if I don't turn them off, they just turn into discs when I photograph the room. Looks like somebody got mad at this door. Oops. See, this is what I'd love to see. This cool lighting that is in a small room, like a bathroom, makes it so much easier to do the editing. It makes everything just look a whole lot better. Use this kind of lighting if you're getting your house ready for photography. It is the way to go. The thing very frequently overlooked when I'm shooting houses are making sure all the light bulbs are replaced. This house has a ton of wonderful natural light to the point where really, I'm not gonna be turning on a whole lot of lights because it just looks so nice already. Why mess up a good thing? It's a beautiful day today. Got really lucky seeing how it's been pretty gross lately. Well, let's go on a little tour of this place. It's pretty cute. Being a tall photographer in a lot of these older homes can be kind of interesting when you're going downstairs. I definitely have a little bit of a low bridge right here. I have hit my head very hard on ceilings way more than I care to admit. A neurodivergent fan will understand that this dress has a tag on it that I just want to rip off, but I'm afraid I'm going to tear the dress and I have to wait to get home so I can cut it off. And I really don't want to have to wait to go. I get home because it just, it's really annoying and it's driving me crazy. This is my partner in photography. It is my little Canon EOS 70D. I've had her since, I think, 2015 when I took her on vacation with me. And now she's my workhorse. This is all of the equipment I use. It's just me and my camera. You'll notice that I keep it pretty low in order to get just the right views of everything. And I use a wide angle lens. It's a 10 to 22 millimeter, which this one I did a lot of research on. I actually found this one used because they get very expensive, but it doesn't give all the distortion that I've had with other lenses in the past. Like it's very annoying. So for some reason, when 
Real estate agents take their own photography. They love to hold their phones up like this and just do these sharp angles of everything. I don't understand why. The key is having straight lines everywhere. Those are called verticals. You can see how I have everything lined up pretty much perfectly straight here. That is the base trick to angles in real estate photography. Obviously, there's a whole lot more that goes into it, but you can just see the difference where it just looks so much better. Of course, I need to have like my finger in the way of it to really get the full effect. A lot of times I also see like a smudged lens. It's like some weird angle or it'll just be here down on the toilet. And I really don't understand. Hiring a professional photographer, especially in Ohio, is not expensive at all. There's just no reason not to do it. I hear a lot of people talking about how the photography makes the house look so much bigger than it really is. And the trick with that is using three walls. Every photo should have three walls in it. That way you can get the most angle of the room and get the best views of everything. I keep wanting to look at myself, which is making my eye line go like this when I should be looking at this, which I'm sure is very annoying for anybody watching. Sorry, it's, <laughs> I can't help it. Another very underrated thing that a lot of people don't think about is a tripod with a level. You'd be amazed at how many photographers don't use a level. It makes things so much easier when you're editing to actually have your photos level in the first place. An example of that three wall roll that I'm doing. And I don't know how good I did that, but and you also sometimes have to get your camera into very interesting positions in order to get the shot right. Whenever I take photographs of windows, I actually take two photos because you can see how this how the window is very light. So I have to take a second one where you can see out the window. But an annoying thing is when there are cars outside, especially cars like this that I have no control over their placement, it can just look bad. My own car, I always park well out of the way and I always ask people to park their cars out of the way. But sometimes there's just nothing you can do. So this is something that's very simple, but you don't see a whole lot of photographers doing, is when you have a small room, put your camera in a portrait orientation. I just don't understand. A lot of agents don't like it when photographers do that, but that's how you get the best views of a room. If you do it in just a landscape, look, you can just see in this, you can't get that much view. Or if you go up and down, I don't know how this is gonna mess up the video, but it's probably gonna look sideways. Either or, I don't understand why more photographers don't do this. It just looks so much better. If I have a trademark as a photographer, it would be my hallway shots. I actually absolutely love doing hallway shots. It's a little house today. Usually these will only take me about 20 minutes to shoot, but since I'm doing a little bit of filming to show you what I'm doing, how I do things, it's taking a little bit longer, but thank you so much for joining me. I hope that this little peek behind the scenes of real estate photography is slightly entertaining, maybe. I don't know. This is my first vlog, so let me know. Comments, what you think, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff, and Thank you to my client for supporting a trans artist.